Today on Bridges, we're going to talk about finding hope and healing after a devastating loss. Welcome to Bridges. I'm Monica Schmelter, and I'm glad that you could join us today. My guest today is Kim Peacock, and she has joined us really to bravely share her story of the devastating loss of her oldest daughter, Nicole. So today's program is for all of us who have ever lost someone and wants to know, will we ever be able to heal? Will we ever be able to enjoy and live life again? And so good to have you today, Kim. Thank you so much for having me. You know, I really do appreciate you being willing to share your story. And let's start with that. I know that you wrote a book, but what is the story? And tell us how, you know, the events surrounding the devastating loss of your daughter. Well, in 1998, we were a typical blended family. Mm -hmm. We had four kids, my husband and I, and our oldest was Nicole. She was from my previous marriage. Lisa was from his previous marriage. Then we had Megan together. Mm -hmm. And then we had just recently adopted our son, Alex, from Russia. So very typical. We um, decided after a busy family, a busy family holiday with <laughs> Christmas that we would go on a vacation to Pismo Beach, which is on the central coast of California. Sounds nice. It's really nice. It's beautiful. You you get to camp right on the beach, oh. and um, and then you take you can take your off roading, whatever it is, ATCs or um, four wheelers, whatever it is, and go out on the sand dunes there and play. So. We decided it would be a good idea to do that. It had been a very busy holiday and kind of unwind together. Mm -hmm. Our daughter, Lisa, was not able to go. She had a basketball tournament, so she had to stay back, and she stayed with my parents, mm -hmm. who lived next door to us. And we set up camp on the beach and proceeded to go out. It was a several-hour drive to get up there, but we went out on the sand dunes to play on, on the sand dunes. We had four-wheelers and a three-wheeler, and and we just were relaxing, enjoying the sun and enjoying just mm -hmm. downtime. Especially after the holidays. It, yeah. was, it was one of those times where you're just, oh, Deep you just breath. breathe. Deep breath, yeah. Mm -hmm. so That's what it felt like. Oh. So I happened to look up just in time to see our oldest daughter, Nicole, ride her three-wheeler off a steep incline. And it seemed like time just slowed down. Mm -hmm. Click, click, click is kind of how I remember it in my mind. And we saw her fall. Um, and she must have gotten disoriented. And she landed on her head with the three-wheeler on top of her. And after that, everything after that for several weeks it was kind of snapshots for me. Mm -hmm. The Lord protected my mind from a lot of yes. the things. But my husband got to her first and um, pulled off her helmet, and he began doing CPR. Mm -hmm. We were way out in the sand dunes, so an ambulance couldn't get out to us. So we called 911, and they, we took her to the beach to meet the paramedics. We you guys had to do that? Yes, yes. My husband was in the back of the truck, and he was doing giving her CPR. And so were you, you were driving? No, my father-in-law was there, okay. and he was driving, and I... I was paralyzed yeah. with yeah. not knowing what to do, mm -hmm. and I just waved them on, go, 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 and I stayed there with my son, um, Alex, mm -hmm. and then um, some of the other family members were mm -hmm. there. A, a really nice couple offered to give me a ride. My, the rest of the family took care of my son, and they gave, us a ride, gave me a ride up to the mm -hmm. beach. And... Um, we the ambulance got there about the same time and the paramedics started working on her mm -hmm. and took her to the hospital. Yeah. A ranger gave me a ride to the hospital. My husband Larry rode with her mm -hmm. and once we got to the hospital, as you can imagine, just fervently praying. A of lot course. of it I can't remember. Right. But um, not long after we all arrived into the waiting room, the doctor came in and bluntly told us, I'm sorry she died at the beach. That's how he said it? He said I mean, not that there's a, anything that could make that better, but he it, just said... He just said it. Just very, I'm sorry, but she died at the beach. So you go from this playing and having fun to just in a matter of, it yeah. felt like seconds. It you know, yeah. obviously took longer than that to everything changing. 
-hmm. And we uh, fell in together and just started praying as a family. And um, because I knew that I was going to need to grab onto the Lord yeah. because this had the potential yeah. to destroy me. Yeah. So first, let me say, I'm just so sorry for your loss. And, Thank you. you know, there isn't any way that you could lose someone that you love, you know, that would, but in a, on a vacation, you know, and with all the family and that you lifted up your eyes at that moment to mm -hmm. see that. That's just so tragic yeah. all the way around. And here you are at the hospital and you realize even though you're numb and even though it seems like time slows down and you just have snapshots, you had that inward knowing of if we don't start praying, like if we don't invite yeah. God into this, it could be more devastating loss. Mm -hmm. But you had the presence of heart to do that. And I do believe it was the Lord I do too. That, that reminded us because the ranger that brought me to the mm -hmm. hospital um, I was just rocking back in the in his vehicle, yeah. just saying, "Lord, please make her ble breathe. Please make yes. her breathe." Over and over, and he just reached over and put his hand on mine and said, something like, "Don't stop praying or keep on praying." Yeah. So in my mind at the time, I thought, "Oh, that means she's going to be healed." Of course. If I keep praying. Well, because we we all want that, and right. we all think that, and the Bible says to keep on asking, to keep on seeking, yeah. and to keep on knocking. So. I always think, Kim, in anything in my life or somebody else's, I should just keep praying until there is no other option. And then mm -hmm. if the miracle doesn't happen the way I'm praying, then I can change that prayer. And of course you would think that God is going to answer that mm -hmm. prayer. Because at the time I thought, well, I can't, this is not something I could ever handle. So he's right. not going to give me more than right. I can handle, which over time has he has really shown me that that's not biblical. But it's not biblical, but we yeah. hear it in church all the we time do. and people say it. And yeah. we, we say that to people like, well, just you're going to be able to hold up because God's not going to give you more than you can handle. But let's be honest, most losses and most tragedies in our life are way more than we can handle without God. It's so true. Yeah. And he, and he says, we are strong in, in our, in his strength. Yes. We are, you know, in, in our, our weakness. weakness, you know, we can boast in our weakness because that's when he comes Amen. in. So he carries yeah. us. Yeah. And so that prayer in the hospital was, I believe him going, remember, just remember. And that was the thing that was our lifeline the whole, through the whole process, through mm -hmm. the many weeks and months and years since then. Yeah. That's so much, but I'm so grateful that God gave you that unction to know to pray. And my hope and my prayer, Kim, is that as people watch this, you know, because everybody doesn't have that presence of heart to know in that moment. You know, sometimes it's just too much for people to bear. And, um, but they might be watching and they might be like, well, God, could, could my family, I mean, could we ever enjoy life again? Because I, I remember talking to a woman you know, not on this Bridges set, but a different one some years ago. And she remembers the first time that she ever laughed after her son died because for her, laughter just wasn't an option. Like years went by. She, and when she laughed, she said she felt guilty yes. because she felt like it wasn't okay mm -hmm. to enjoy life. So for someone who's just maybe starting or stuck in the grief process, how maybe could they get a different perspective, maybe invite God into that? I think being, letting go of that guilt, like mm -hmm. you talked about, and being able to just embrace our, embrace the grief and understand that joy and grief can coexist. Mm. Because I was the same, I felt guilty the first time I laughed. I remember the first time that I laughed and I felt guilty because I thought I am betraying her memory. Mm -hmm. I must not be hurting enough. But that is not, that's not scriptural. Right. Scripture tells us that we do grieve, but we grieve with hope. Right. And that hope is what carries us. So that's why we can embrace the grief. And when I say embrace the grief, not to let it define us, but just to let it bring healing to us. Mm -hmm. You have to embrace that, understand, accept that, but grieve with hope. And then mm -hmm. that's where the joy is able to come in later. It's sometimes it's just little spurts and it's periodic. Sometimes it's a long ways away, but it will come. 
Yeah, and I think it's so important, and I, I think that I do understand what you mean when you say embrace the grief, because the thing is, if we don't allow ourselves to grieve, then there's no healing, and I don't think healing means that we don't ever miss our loved ones, because I think we always do, mm -hmm. but we don't heal properly, and then people's emotions are just all messed up, and sometimes people, when, when we're Christians, think, well, grief with hope means that there's nothing sad about this, and I can't that can't be right. No, I, it, grief is just a natural response to loss. If we didn't grieve, it wouldn't even be acknowledging that there is a loss and there's that separation. Now, I believe Nicole is alive and in Amen. heaven and yes. free, more alive than I am. Mm -hmm. But at that time, I just miss her. And yes. I have all of these plans and all of these things I want to do with her as my as my daughter, watching mm -hmm. her grow up. Of and that... Course. that is a natural response mm -hmm. to loss. If I didn't experience that, that's the way God created us. That's he right. created us with that heart. And to deny that is to deny the way that he created us, yeah. for and sure. I, and I think that's so important because I think that many times, especially believers in Christ, feel like we have to deny loss. Yes. And that we have to say, well, because they're in heaven, everything is A-OK -okay in this moment. And I think that just makes grief and loss that much harder because you never really do process no. that. No, and you have to process it at some time. Mm -hmm. You can process it at the time. And there are a lot of things that I would push down and not, I'm not even going to go there mm -hmm. because it was painful. Sure. But I do believe God brought in those little moments, those little times that I was able to just absorb it, ab absorb what I was feeling. And, and then later, then the healing would come. But if I didn't do it, when he called me to do it, mm -hmm. it, and then to deny that, it's not real. Right. And, and we're going to have to face it. We're going to have to yes. go through that pain somewhere that's, and sometime. That's exactly right. We've got to take a break. We want you to stay with us. When we come back on Bridges, I'm going to continue to talk about Kim, about grief and loss and allowing God to walk us through all of that process. For more information on a guest, visit our website, ctntv.org. Join the Bridges community on Facebook. Visit Facebook and search for Bridges with Monica. We would love to connect with you. Don't miss another episode of Bridges. Subscribe to our YouTube channel today where you can find all of Monica's latest teachings and interviews. It's easy to do. Just visit youtube.com, search Monica Schmelter and click subscribe. Once you are subscribed, click the bell icon to get notified when a new episode is available to view. Thanks for watching Bridges. If you're just joining us today on Bridges, we're talking about finding hope and healing after a devastating loss. And my guest today, Kim Peacock, has endured a devastating loss and is here today to share her story about losing her oldest daughter, Nicole, in a tragic accident. And she's sharing her story and she also wrote a book to help all of us deal with grief when it comes our way and especially when it's an unexpected loss. So Kim, again, I just wanna tell you, I'm, I am so sorry for the loss and I think especially that it was on a family vacation and your beautiful girl, Nicole. But you wrote this book, Victorious Heart, because grief, you know, it is a process and none of us know what to do. Like there's no manual on what happens when you tragically, and especially when it's a child, no one writes a manual on that. And yet you put a book together, Victorious Heart. Tell me why you wrote the book and how it might be helpful to someone. I think exactly what you said. There is not a manual, yeah. and this isn't a manual per se, but right. it's our story. Mm -hmm. The name Victorious Heart is what Nicole's name means, Victorious mm -hmm. Heart. Great description of our girl, very victorious and free. But the fact that when we lost her, I felt lost in my grief. I mm -hmm. thought there is no way that I can survive this, and I had a really hard time getting my footing. But any time I would see another parent that had lost a child, I would just grab onto them, yeah. so to speak, and just say, okay, they survived, I can do it. And I feel like the Lord has just done such a mighty work in our lives. We're called to be um, 
more than conquers in mm -hmm. all of the stuff That's that right. we go through. Mm -hmm. And to me, more than conquers means victorious. Yes. That means we're victorious. So I want other people to know mm -hmm. that they will survive, that there are ways to cope with, with grief. And there's no one way to cope with no. it, but um, that the Lord will bring, bring you through and that they're not alone. Yeah. And I think from somebody else's story, like as you've penned your story in Victoria's heart, we can learn. This isn't a manual. It's your story. There is no manual on grief. People want, we all gravitate to, well, you know, if you tell me three steps on how yeah. to get over grief, you yeah. know, uh, and for those of you watching, especially if you've gone through devastating loss, you're like, God, I just want you to tell me one, two, three, four. And there is none of that. But he is gracious and he's good and he walks us through. And so what I found is, as I learned from someone else's story, God's not going to walk me through the way he did for you. Exactly. But it gives me the hope and the courage and the faith to know if Kim, Kim Peacock did it, I can do it. And God may work in my life in a different way, but Victoria's heart is about how God works. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And it's not because I'm strong or I'm no. super spiritual. Mm -hmm. it, it's because I am weak, mm -hmm. but he did it. He yeah. did all of it. And, and Victoria's heart is so other people know that they can do that, that the Lord will carry it carry them through. And I think when someone reads the chapters in the book and the different notes that I have, they will realize, oh, I'm not crazy. I am experiencing this. They aren't going to experience everything the same way right. I did, but there are going to be components that they go, they resonate. Okay, this, yeah. I understand this. This is how I felt and I'm not crazy. Yeah, because we do, we can feel crazy and isolated in our own flesh and the devil and sometimes mm -hmm. people in their ridiculous comments yeah. that I know that they mean well can make us feel like we're crazy. Like, well, you need to be over this by now. And well, you know, God took your angel, but let's just move on. It's like, are you... You know, those yeah. things are not helpful. They aren't helpful. And I do know that people mean well. Yes, they do. So, but I can, those things are very hurtful. Mm -hmm. Even some of the things that are true, like I do believe Nicole is alive and free Amen. in heaven. Mm -hmm. But to say, for someone to say to me just days after she passed away, well, she's in a better place. You need to, you have the Lord. <laughs> and and we, I do have the Lord. Yes, those you are do. True. <laughs> Absolutely. But my heart is just broken. Right. And for me to not be able to just hurt and have someone hug me and... Right. Because sometimes I think the only thing and the best thing we can do for people is we can pray and we can show up. Exactly. And just let people cry. Yeah. And like, don't make the cry have to be a spiritual cry. And mm -hmm. well, she's in a better place. We know that. And goodness, of course we rejoice. Yeah. But you still lost your oldest daughter. Exactly. And, uh, you know, I, I heard someone say to someone, well, God knows what's best. Well, he does. He does. That's completely true, but that's not the time or the place mm -mm. for any of that. I, I think no. this realness of being genuine and offering sincere compassion of, gosh, Kim, I'm just so sorry this happened. So someone, if they pick up Victoria's heart, they can have some of those moments of like, oh, I'm not a crazy person grieving this yes. loss. This is how it goes. Yes, yes. For sure. And uh, just to go on what you said a moment mm -hmm. ago, some of my biggest comfort that I received was from people who just showed up and hugged me yeah. and didn't say a word. Mm -hmm. So I completely agree. Yeah. As I had a woman once, as she had lost her six-year-old daughter, mm -hmm. and she said, the kindest, most compassionate thing that anybody did is a friend just came over and just let her cry and cry and cry. And all she did was get up to get more Kleenexes. Mm -hmm. She didn't say a word. She didn't right. do anything. She, she just showed up. And that has stuck with me all these years that I don't need to say a thing to try to make it right. Um, it's lovely for me to pray, but it might not even be, I might just need to sit there and be quiet. And yes. you're saying that, that, that affirmation of somebody just letting you be in your grief. Yes. Did you, Kim, and I've heard a lot of people say this, did you start to define your life by the loss? Like this was life with Nicole, this is life after Nicole, and is that good to do or? I don't know if it's good, I think it's natural. Mm -hmm. I think, and then over time that kind of eases. But for me, even when I think about memories, I'll think, okay, is that before Nicole went to heaven mm -hmm. or after? There's a divide there, mm -hmm. and I believe there will always be a dividing yeah. line in my life yeah. because of that, because it was so substantial. Sure. 
But um, I do think that it's natural, and I think over time that eases, and then it's less defining of me as, as a woman. Yeah. Does it, are you able now to enjoy laughing and things without undue guilt? I am. Mm -hmm. I am, and I believe that that's a gift that yes. the Lord gave me. Nicole was always a prankster and did funny <laughs> things. And so I remember the first, first time that I started to realize it's okay to laugh. Mm -hmm. And I started thinking of a memory of her just being goofy and tickling me and just being silly. Mm -hmm. And I could just feel that laughter coming up inside me. And I almost felt like the Lord was going, this is from me. This is a gift. Enjoy it. So instead of being feeling guilty now mm -hmm. for laughing or experiencing joy, I realize our di my days here are numbered. Yeah. So I can be defeated. I can be depressed. I can sit there um, and uh, feel lost in my grief and let it define me, mm -hmm. or I can experience joy. Right. And like I said before, we can experience grief and joy. They can coexist. Yeah, and it's amazing how in our humanness, we want to say, well, we're either happy or we're sad. Right. We're either filled with faith or we're, we're cowardly. And it's like, it yeah. is not a contradiction of faith mm -mm. to be joyful and grieving mm -hmm. or like to be afraid and be brave we can be all of those things because we're human. Right. I would have to think, do you have um, like st part of your story or helps in here for parents who worry about um, parenting their children and being a good enough parent? Because you, you're dealing with this loss and yet you still have other children that need you. Mm -hmm. I do. And I, and I think to, to recognize my own grief and to take the time to embrace my own grief, but also to minister to them. Yeah. Um, I had to get over my fear of losing another yeah. child. And every time they drove, every time they went anywhere, I had this paralyzing yeah. fear. And the Lord just walked me through that. It was mm. the, the brave versus fear. I had to do both. And right. I had to walk through it and not micromanage them. Yeah. And I think that, you know, it is a balance. And it's a beautiful balance to be able to go, okay, now I'm going to just embrace raising them and understanding that they each have one of their own uh, grief journey that I have to help them through. Yeah. And how is your how is your family now? Because you all had to deal with this together. Uh, very, we're doing very well. Uh, we actually went on to adopt two more boys, Aww. and so they uh, never got to meet their sister Nicole, but they talk about her all the time. So we're blessed to have them. And I have six grandchildren. Oh my that, goodness. That, Congratulations. Oh, thank you. There's <laughs> nothing better than grandkids. And my first granddaughter is named after Nicole. So just, oh. just a huge blessing. And to be able to understand the tenderness in my heart towards them and understand how precious each moment is because you don't know. Yeah. You know, we think we know. But we don't know. No. Like we all, and I, and again, I don't think this is a contradiction of faith or anything mm -hmm. like that. But we have in our heads, you know, when we get married or whatever, yeah. you know, that this is kind of how life is going to go. And who thinks mm -hmm. ever that they will lose a child or have mm -hmm. a special needs child mm -hmm. or, or these things that happen? And like, I think in those moments, we all struggle for okay, God, like what now? Yeah, this wasn't in the plan. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah, and I think that that's very true. I had to let go of that because my first question was why? Mm -hmm. I don't understand why is this happening? Right. And he, I had to give that question to him and say, okay, I don't know. I don't know why this happened. I don't understand. I know that you knew the days of Nicole's yeah. life on this earth yeah. and she had a certain amount of time yeah. here. And so I have to trust him. And, and I have to decide if what I said I believed before was true in my pain. Oh. And what I realized is not only was it true, but God is my anchor. And he just kept me from flying away to, in my pain. Yeah. And, and those are all as hard as they are and as unfair as I think all of that is. Yeah. Those are our choices. <laughs> yes. Yes. You have a choice. Yeah, mm -hmm. and they're hard choices. Mm -hmm. And it's especially hard because not everybody has to make those choices. Mm -hmm. But that happened in your life, so mm -hmm. you had to make those choices, and you're here to say, with God's help, we can make it. Yes, that's exactly. And only his help, because I am the weakest person around. Yeah. But because he lifted me up and he carried me, Amen. we can make it through any any 
thing. Yeah. It's hard. Yes. But it's, we can be more than conquerors. Amen. And we are mm -hmm. in the middle of all of it. So yes. thank you so much, Kim, for oh, coming and for sharing welcome. your story. Thank you so much for having me. I yeah, appreciate it's it. It's been so good. And I know that it will help many, many people. That's my hope. Yeah. Stay tuned. Monica will be right back with closing comments. Log on to www.ctntv.org where you can make a prayer request, view our program guide, see who's on bridges, or even watch one of Monica's latest teachings. Log on to www.ctntv.org. When I truly turned my heart to the Lord, He took every sin I ever did away from me. God really is your other half. God, yeah. <laughs> he's the only person who can really, you know, fill those holes and cracks in your heart that you're so wanting someone to fill. It's no good to have a big dream if you're not putting yourself in motion to yes. go after that. Prayer changes things. If you need prayer, call 615-754 0039 or email prayer at ctntv.org. For more information on a guest, visit our website, ctntv.org. Today on Bridges, we've talked about finding hope and healing after a devastating loss. And one of the things that we've been clear on today is that there is no one, two, three step that any of us can go through and then say, well, when we're on step number three, the grief is all over. God works in each of our lives in different ways. But what he does promise is that he does promise that he is our comforter and that he is our hope in the middle of our grief. And rather than denying grief and pretending like it doesn't exist, to just acknowledge that loss is devastating, and especially if it's an unexpected loss. Um, not that loss is ever easy, but if it's unexpected and if it's the tragic loss of a child, those are just things in life that we really don't ever expect to go through. But I do want to encourage you that God promises that he is our comforter, that he will be our refuge, that he will be our strength. And I think that Kim Peacock shared something today that is so important. The Bible says clearly that when we are weak, he is strong. In grief, you don't have to try to be strong. You can just say, I am weak. And God, I need your strength in this very weak moment and in my very my heart that feels very weak and in my life that is so just riddled with grief and trauma and fear and pain and say, God, I am just weak. I've got nothing left, but I trust you. I trust you to be my comforter. I trust you to be my strength. And it's not like one day that you'll ever get over it, but he will walk you through and bring comfort to your pain. We're out of time. We've got to go, but we say goodbye and God bless you.